On the surface, Gmail seems like a basic email platform for simple sending and receiving. But under the hood, there are tons of functions that you can make use of, like schedule sending, label organization, theme changes, and even Google's Gmail chat. Stay tuned though to find out how each of these useful features work, and we're going to give you some tips and tricks that you maybe didn't already know. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So there are plenty of times when you have an idea of something to say or a picture to send, but it's way too early or late at that night to do so or even that point of the day. That's when Gmail's schedule send feature comes in really handy. And this feature allows you to delay sending an email until a preferred time in the future or whenever you like, for instance. You can schedule an email to send well over a year in advance if you really want to. In fact, there doesn't actually seem to be a limit on how far out you can schedule an email, which is a really cool option. On your Android phone to access this, just head over to the Gmail app on your device itself, find the compose email button in the lower right side of your screen, and then tap that to compose an email. Just type out what you'd like, add any attachments that you need to send to a potential contact. When you're done composing, tap the three dot menu at the top right of the screen. From here, you can tap the schedule send option and select the time and date when you want to add that to uh, someone's inbox. You can choose between Google's presets or even define your own time frame by hitting that pick time and date option too. Hit schedule send and confirm and that should finalize your email and it will send on the date that you've selected. On web, if you want to use this, go to Gmail on your preferred browser and sign in or go continue if you're already signed in. Look for the compose button and it should be located toward the top left of your browser screen. Then just click that, write out your email like normal as you would on your Android phone and when you're finished, Click the drop down arrow, which you'll see next to the send button within Gmail. Now click schedule send. Just like on mobile, you can choose from Google's preset times or pick your own time and date by hitting date and time. Click schedule send and then finish the email. Both on mobile and web, you can actually cancel any email that you have scheduled if you're worried about that in two different ways. First, you'll notice a small notification at the bottom of the screen after you initially schedule an email. This no notification has an undo button upon it. By hitting this, your email will just cancel and revert to draft form and be found in your drafts folder. So you can edit and try again if you want. The other way to cancel the email is to head into your scheduled folder in Gmail, which appears after schedule your first email on the web, but it is constantly visible on mobile. Here you can find your scheduled email and choose to delete it or cancel it by opening and tapping the cancel send button. Schedule send in Gmail can come in handy pretty often. So it's a good function to use or know how to use, especially if you do want to send things far off into the future. Labels in Gmail act sort of like dynamic folders for the emails that you want to organize and sort, and it's something we think you should know about. With this, you can add rules for new emails coming into your inbox and automatically sort those into labels and even change the color of the label in order to easily manage and find them. Changing the color is relatively easy to do and can liven up your inbox a little bit more too, on top of that. While this feature is only available for Gmail on web, it's still an extremely useful organization tool. And here's how to change label colors in Gmail. So what you want to do is head over to Gmail in your browser of choice, and in the sidebar menu to the left of your screen, find a label that you've created, or if not, you can actually don't have to have any labels created. You can just do so by scrolling down the sidebar menu and clicking create new label if you haven't already done so. When hovering over a label with your mouse, you'll see a three dot menu appear. Just click that. Click label color and choose amongst the preset colors Gmail has to offer, or you can even create your own if you've got a little bit of a visual flair that you want to adhere to. You can also create rules for emails in your Gmail inbox automatically to add labels. For instance, tax related documents and receipts can be siphoned into one label for easy management and then search later on. Not only that, but emails can automatically be forward, deleted, archived, and much more. And here's how you can create some incoming email rules on your account. So you need to head over to Gmail on the web or your web browser of choice. And at the top of the page, click the adjustment icon in the search bar. Fill out the parameters to your liking or whatever you want to search for. So here you can actually define a set of emails from a certain sender as well as define emails, including certain terms. This form can be filled out a lot in different ways and not all boxes do need to be filled. That's worth noting. You can test out your parameters by clicking search to see just what sort of emails do come up. Now, once you've filled out the information to your liking, click create filter and choose what happens to those particular emails. Here you can choose whether these emails get immediately deleted, starred or moved into an existing new label if you wish. Once you're done though, just hit create filter again. Creating rules for incoming emails is a Gmail feature that can help you stay organized a lot more easily. 
play around with these different rules to see just what helps you out the most, as this tool can be used in thousands of different ways, and we're not gonna be able to touch on maybe even one tenth of those in this video. Another nifty little feature that you can enable is the unread message icon. This number will appear as a number in your Google Chrome tab icon and shows you exactly how many emails you haven't read yet. And here's how to enable it. So what you'll need to do is go to gmail.com and Google Chrome or your particular browser, look for and click this settings cog at the top right of the page and then click see all settings. Now find and click the advanced section. Now scroll right down to the bottom and click the unread message icon and now enable this. Click save changes and after Gmail refreshes, once you do hit this save button, you'll notice a small number that appears on the Chrome tab if you do have unread emails and this just makes it a little bit easier to indicate that you need to check your inbox. So whether you like your inbox to look condensed so that all of your information is right where you need it or spaced out, Gmail has you covered. By going into settings, you can change Gmail's density and there are a few options here. There's the default, the comfortable, and there's also a compact option. You can play around with these different viewing densities and choose one that fits your needs. Personally, I've got to say we like the default since it shows the most information at a glance, especially if you do get a notification on your device. But overall, it is a nice touch that you can adjust this, see more information, close more information off as you see fit. Some Gmail features are purely there as quality of life or aesthetic changes and themes fit right into that category. Rather than a dull white or black Gmail, you can actually develop or choose a theme that represents you a little bit better or just lightens up your mood when replying to a monotonous emails all day long. Gmail does allow you to choose between preset photos, colors, and even your own Google Photos library to use as a background. And here's how to change your Gmail theme on a whim. So head into gmail.com on web now look for the settings cog at the top right of the page and click this. Now look for the theme section. And from here you can choose from a few of these photos or you can hit the view all to choose from even more that Google has collated. Once you hit the view all page, scroll through it this and find out what really speaks to you. If nothing does though, you can click the my photos option at the bottom left. This means you can choose between featured, my photos, and even recently selected if you want them to revert to a previous photo. It is worth noting that if an image is over 20 megabytes, then sadly you won't be able to use this for your theme. So you wanna keep it under that limit if you do have an option that you want to select. Once you do find the photo that you do want, select it and now hit save. Once you hit save, you should now see a brand new theme appear in the background of Gmail. There's actually no limit to how many times you can change your theme, so we would say just go nuts. Some settings are fantastic when enabled in Gmail, but others are just a little bit better when disabled. One example is Google Chat and Meet. And while these optional chat platforms can be useful for communication, it does tend to clutter up Gmail, which is already prone to quite a lot of clutter as is. Whether you should disable Google Chat and Meet is completely up to how you use it and how you want to use Gmail. In case you've never used these features and do want to clean up the Gmail experience, then here's how to disable both of these. So go over to Gmail in a web browser. Now look for the settings cog at the top right of your screen, then tap the see all settings button. Look for and click the chat and meet section here. Now next to chat, just select off. Next to meet, select hide the meet section in the main menu. Now click save changes. You don't have to disable Google Chat and Meet in Gmail on either or even either of them. It depends on your preferences when you're using the email client. Once you do hit save changes though, Gmail will refresh and your changes will be reflected visually. Suddenly though, you'll find that this side menu is a little less cluttered and a little bit easier to navigate with these disabled though. For the privacy conscious, Gmail also includes a confidential mode that adds extra layers of security to outgoing emails. And this blocks the ability for recipients to forward, copy, print, or even download an email that you send. And you'll be able to even set a time limit for that email expiry too before it auto deletes. But that's not all though, as you can even protect the content with an SMS passcode, which is another major bonus. To send emails using this function, you can do this in a number of ways. On mobile, just compose a new email and tap the three dot upper right menu, then tap the confidential mode. On desktop, compose a new email and find the lock icon with a clock and tap this to access the confidential mode settings. If you do worry about hitting send, delete, or even archiving an email accidentally, then you'll be pleased to hear that Google does have a contingency plan in Gmail to help ease the stress a little bit. It means you can confirm each of these or each of these actions so that you're always fully aware of what's going on. To access these settings, 
all you need to do is head to the Gmail app on your device, then open the left side bar menu and scroll down to settings. Now tap general settings and all you need to do is scroll all the way down to action confirmations and enable disable your preferred options for deletion, archiving and sending. It's just a nice little extra option that gives you that little bit of extra peace of mind when you do add or delete, send or use any of these options. If you have fast fingers, Gmail also offers the ability to undo sent emails that you need to tweak or maybe haven't worded something quite correctly before hitting that reply or send button. And this is set to default by five seconds across the board on Gmail, which of course isn't very long. However, you can adjust this all the way up to 30 seconds and here's how to do it. What you'll need to do is go to the gmail.com website on your browser. Now look for the settings cog at the top right of your screen. Then when you've opened this tap see all settings and look for the undo send section. Next, click the drop down and adjust this between five, which is the default 10, 20, and even 30 seconds. Now click save changes. This means that when you send an email on desktop, you should get a little pop-up toast menu on your screen, which will give you a little bit of an option to press undo, and that will just revert your email back into the draft section or the reply back to your reply chain, which makes things a little bit easier if you're worried about sending things off that bit too early. On desktop, Gmail also has an offline mode that lets you keep access to your account and specific content, even if you do lack an internet connection. For those on mobile, this is already built in and you can adjust this if you do want to, but you can store up to 90 days worth of emails on your desktop or laptop, meaning you can refer to these emails at any time when you don't have internet access. To do so, you'll need to open up Gmail in a browser. Now look for the settings cog at the top right of your screen. From here, tap to see all settings and find the offline tab. Next, from here, you can just check that enable offline mode and you'll be able to tweak the settings as you see fit and get an estimation of the storage capacity that the downloaded emails will take on your device. From here, just click save changes and any expanded emails that you do wanna access will mean they'll be available offline without needing to worry about having to be connected to Wi-Fi or data networks. Gmail also does some cool things with the way that it reads email addresses on your account. Effectively, this means that you can do all kinds of cool things like drop or add full stops in your account name, or even add plus icons to expand the aliases of a regular old email address. For instance, say you sign up for a service and want to use a dedicated email just for that, well, you can add a plus Twitter or a plus Instagram to your existing Gmail account, and it should be useful for creating separation on your accounts themselves. This will also appear in the format user plus twitter at gmail.com, for instance, and this makes it a little bit easier to search for specific emails on a whim using the inbuilt search functions. That's not all though, with Gmail doesn't read full stop, so that means you can add multiples to your account and still get incoming correspondence, again, expanding unique emails that you have on your account. For instance, twitter.user at gmail.com. So there's just a few things that you might not have realized that you can do and maybe will change your Gmail experience, especially for non-power users. Whether you want to implement all of them or even none of them is completely up to you. Either way, we think Gmail is a great tool and even greater when you know how to organize labels, change the color, and even disable and enable certain features. Well, I want to know though, what is your favorite? Let me know down in the comment sections below and even if you have some uh, tips and tricks of your own that we didn't cover in this video, hopefully though you enjoyed this look at some advanced Gmail functionality. Until next time though, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.